Hello everybody and welcome to this Aeronautica Imperialis Astra Militarum Desert Camouflage tutorial. A small advice to my German-speaking audience. Als deutschsprachige Zuschauer habt ihr die Möglichkeit in die Videobeschreibung zu gehen und dort auf den Link German Overdub zu klicken, um dort eine komplett deutsch übervertonte Version dieses Erklärvideos zu bekommen. Und nun zurück zum Englischsprachigen. In this tutorial I want to show you this natural looking desert scheme with a little bit of a caramel hue, with addition of a little bit of weathering, rust, and to contrast it all, these comic-like cockpit and uh, lens effects on the nose. And I will talk you through all of these steps while the video footage is running at 200% of the normal speed. And in the left upper side, you always been shown the color I use at the moment. If you want to comment anything, just put it in the comment section below. And now, have fun with this tutorial! On this Valkyrie Assault Carrier I started with a Zandri Dust Undercoat, so it fits the main color, Vallejo's Dark Yellow, nearly perfect. And I just only need one smooth coat of this color, right applied from the airbrush. And for the whole video I must say I'm not an English native speaking guy, so I hope you could excuse some mispronunciation or uh, other stuff. On to the next color I applied a light brown by Vallejo Model Air in a kind of tiger stripe pattern. I don't follow any um, pattern examples or some reference material, I just put down the color where I think it fits right and it's diluted like one to one with a thinner medium, so I go over the parts for two or three times at least to get a good coverage. If you don't know where to put the light color patches, you could get any internet search engine and search for a Tiger Strike Desert Camouflage pattern and I think you can get your picture there to fit it on to your aircraft. I thought to put some lighter colors like bluish or whitish color underneath the aircraft, but when I think of helicopters where I think there is a main reference for the Valkyrie. There are mostly not light colors underneath, except maybe the uh, Soviet hind, and uh, so I put the color, the camouflage pattern all around and even on the downside of the armor compartment. The next step is uh, golden brown to get some more of these tiger striping patches and I put some of these right next to the light brown stripes and some of them just separately on the dark yellow color so that I get a nice pattern that uh, fit my personal taste. I think you could apply all these colors with a paintbrush if you don't get an airbrush. Uh, you need to dilute the color very very much and do several coats with a very very thin color to get something like this but I must say it's uh, most most easiest with the airbrush so I recommend to get some uh, I don't think that beginner airbrushes are that expensive and just to try this out I think uh, you could invest some money can't you? After all this is done, we are ready on the airbrush place and go right to the painting table to uh, get 
the rest of the miniature done. And the first thing to do here, where you can see the camo pattern better under this lighting conditions, uh, I grab some Avalon Sunset, it's uh, like mm, a little bit mustardy yellow, and get some markings like a squadron or army markings. I like this yellow tone because this is a color scheme I want to reproduce for my 140k Valkyrie squadron and uh, there I got a little bit of a Scottish theme with the old Scottish flag, this yellow background with a red lion and uh, all this stuff. So this fits my personal taste perfectly. After two or three coats of this yellow color, I get on with a recess shading and I put a Seraphim Sepia La Medium Medium one-to-one -one mix in all the recesses. And uh, if you go on to the armor panels, get a little bit of splotching, you can wipe it off with your thumb or uh, get your brush damp with water and just uh, remove the excess paint like this, like I do it here on this side part. And uh, this recess shading is done all over the miniature on all the little nooks and crannies to give it a little more definition in depth perception. Also I lace the yellow parts to give them a little bit more of this mustard color tone or color shifting so that it will look, look nicer in my eyes. After the recess shading there is time for a little bit of dry brushing with Zendri dust all over the miniature with a little bit of dry brushing, a light dry brush. Uh, Zendri dust is a little bit darker than the light brown but a little bit brighter than the golden brown so it fits nicely to fit all the colors together and give a little bit of a highlight, a little bit of definition. And as you can see here I applied some decals. This is an optional step so I don't get this in depth and I think you all know how you apply decals in the first place. So just a lightly rough dry brush all around to get a little bit of definition and you can say okay this is my color scheme done these are all the armor panels uh, ready and you can go on to get to the detail work but I like my aircraft a little bit of uh, roughed up you can say so in the next step I would go to a little bit of weathering and a little bit of battle damage kinda for the camouflage pattern for these color scheme parts. And this is how I get them. I take the base color Morgast Brown, it's a light beige tone. I get a blister sponge. This uh, could be protective material when you get your metal miniatures or stuff like this and you put a little bit of the color down on your sponge and wipe the most excess off on a paper towel like when you're dry brushing and now you stipple on with the colored edge of the sponge a little bit of these small small paint flakes and these got the effect like there is um, a desert uh, a sandstorm where this aircraft flew in through and uh, some of the larger pebbles hit the painting and when something hits a surface there is a little bit of an indentation and when you look at this the light reflects in a kind of another way from this area than the rounding surfaces and uh, so I get a little bit of a color var variation, a little bit of weathering, roughening up all the edges and give it a little bit more appeal for the eye than just a smooth surface. I know weathering and battle damage is not for everyone so you can leave this step aside if you don't like it, 
I think it gives all the aircraft a little bit more of character, so I proceed with the next step for weathering. It's dried bark, so a, a little bit of a dark brown, and I get some dotted lines down on the armor platings to give it the illusion that on these spots the paint is chipped away so you can see the anti-rust paint layer underneath and uh, here you can go all bonkers and rust the machine up like it's uh, get crashed on the surface or you maybe can only get these uh, areas these color splotches on the front of the machine so that there's like um, a light caliber flak or anti-aircraft fire and the bullets hit the machine but ricochet off of the armor plating but uh, just chipped away the upper paint surfaces. Or you can go down on the uh, down side of the aircraft on the on the uh, lower parts like uh, the machine landed in uh, something of a rough vegetation and uh, this uh, stuff rubbed off, off some paint there is uh, only your inspiration or creativity is the border you have to reach or pass and after this step the weathering, the first step of the weathering are done and I go to a little bit of detail work and I take a dark metal color, in this case Iron Warrior, to block out all the metal areas, the turbines, the uh, exhaust entry, um, the little uh, turbine thingies on the tips of the wings, the landing gear, all the weapon barrels and these um, electronic devices on the Valkyrie's nose like you see here and after that I go directly to highlight these parts with a lighter silver tone in this case lead belcher and I give it a good layer from up above to give it a little bit more of depth of variation all on the gun barrels on these electronic devices from the up upper side on uh, the turbines and the sides of the landing gear so that I don't get these layers all messed up and all around I fixate on the uh, uh, I focused sorry I focused on the upper parts and on the sides of all the metal areas this step is uh, followed by another highlight for the metal pieces and it's Rune Fang Steel, a very light uh, metal color. And I give all the metal parts something like a little bit of a dotted edge highlight, as you see here on the turbine. And um, the only thing is the middle part of the turbine, there you can uh, can't do any good edge highlighting, so I take my brush like when I'm dry brushing and get it against the structure just on the on the upper parts and uh, leave the color just on on the raised areas like you see now. So to uh, fit the color scheme of my great Valkyries, uh, on, the, on the bigger Valkyries, I get this little Aquila thingy in the front, a little bit of golden color, in this case Balthazar Gold. And now it's time for shading all the metal areas. It's a mix of Agrax Earthshade and Le Mihen Medium 1 to 1 mixture. And I put it down, pour it down all on the metal. This has the effect that you bind these th three separate silver colors together and you dull the effect down a little bit. Of course, on uh, this scale I think it's not so good to have very very shiny metals and uh, so I got here a uh, three part layering and highlighting and now the shading to give it 
a little bit, bit more of depth and definition. So all around the metal parts and then it's time for a little bit of highlighting. The uh, Aquila in the front will be highlighted with Balthazar Gold and Rune Lord Breath in the next step, but this is total additional, you can leave it in the shaded Balthazar Gold color and it would fit nicely on this color scheme. To give the metal, the silver, a little bit of more of definition, I go for Runefang Steel and my sponge again and do a little bit of stippling like we done with the battle damage but now only on the silver parts. Why did I do this and not a straight line? I think on this model scale a straight line would uh, look too um, too highly definitive uh, for it's got too much definition for this small scale miniature and it would just uh, very fast look uh, like a comic or a cartoon and I don't want this, I want a little bit of a natural feeling for all these parts so I get done it with stippling. Now a little bit of scribe work on the nose, a little bit of flavor, the pilot got its own symbol, in this uh, case an ace of spades, and uh, a little bit of writing on the side, so like um, it's, a, it's an oath of the moment, or it's um, some lists of confirmed kills, or campaign notes, just a little bit of evident black detail work here, nothing too special and your own creativity is what binds you to this what you want to do. On my greater Valkyrie models for 40k I got this spot on the side for something like uh, World War 2 or Vietnam pin-up girls so I got a little bit of flavor on the machines. Now the little tubings on the turbines there is a Skavenblade Dinge as a base color, uh, or you can call it Skavenblade Dinge, I don't know. Uh, I'm a little bit confused around this color's name. Just a base coat with this color, and the next step would to be a little bit of structure, so that you can emulate a little bit of surface. And uh, I go with Storm Vermin fur and paint some little stripes, small, small stripes, to give the illusion that's a, a, a pipe with some surface texture. texture. I know the camera is a little bit blurry here, I, I hope you can excuse this, but it's. I think it's very hard to paint a miniature with the, a camera in front of your face. And uh, these are some minor technical difficulties. After this there is a layer of dawn stone and to pick the raised area on this piping to add another another color for depth. Uh, this is total, totally additional, you can leave it just in Skavenblad Dinge and you will be fine, so just go with the scheme as far as you want. In this step I pick out all the little lenses in corn red and give the rocket pods, the missiles, a color that I think is a little bit comic, but could be reasonable. So I think even in our world uh, some rockets got a different uh, warhead coloration, so it's not too far off like um, like you get uh, wordings on some rockets with boom or another stuff. Um, I think red Missile tips is the way that you can go here. 
This is um, the next step with Mephiston Red to get a lens effect and another layer of color on the rockets. For the lens effect I um, think about a circle. All is in corn red and the right down corner is the next lighter color. And uh, the white rider red is the next step. Even smaller line on the right down corner and uh, maybe I th maybe you know how lenses are painted so I don't need to explain for all you that are curious I think I would put another tutorial for only four lenses in around the next month on my channel so you can visit again and do this but I don't think you don't have to overdo it here um, with uh, two colors these lenses look also good enough on this scale and a little bit of Avaland sunset in the lowest right corner this is the reflection point down in the right corner and uh, the last step for the lenses would be the reflection point on the left upper corner of the lens with a like uh, off white in this case it's palette witch flash so that you can get a little bit of reflecting down on the lens but as i said this is totally additional you don't need to do this the next step is the cockpit now it's time for a little bit of sheeting i pick my ultramarine blue citadel contrast paint and uh, apply it to the windows and this got the effect the first effect I know how the shapes of the windows are now and uh, where are some corners or some edges and the second effect the contrast paint would settle in the recesses between the window and the framing so that I could get a little bit of uh, a little bit lazy in the next step and just need to paint the flat surface and don't need to go right into the recess with the next next paint and uh, don't worry about uh, overspill too much cause we just define the color of the cockpit's framing later with Zendry dust so uh, you don't need to paint that steady like I do on this part right now. Oh, just a little overspill. A little bit um, of this color has been wiped up off with my thumb and the rest is uh, removed with a damp brush. But not all of this color is done away, so I clean it up later. The color, for example, on this window piece that I painted at first, all the, all the glass is painted in Cantor blue. And you see I don't go right to the recesses. There is the ultramarine blue and the sheet is perfect. If you don't like this comic approach, you just can leave it with the blue or you get, can go into a darkish uh, um, like black, dark grey or dark green tone and uh, the cockpit would look fine. But I think this um, comic like color reflection is the way to go here. In one window for example this is also like I paint the lenses. This is Alatog blue in the right down corner um, around these edge, then Fenrisian grey in a lighter line down there as the highest reflection on this part of the window and Ulthuan grey as the reflective spot on the left upper part of this window piece. And you're done. Just repeat the step for all the windows and we go to defining the cockpit's frame with Zendry dust here and we can clean up the overspill and just give a sharp edge between framing and window so that the window effect just looks even more striking. And then you can call the Valkyrie done. 
but there are some steps that I would take now to give it a little bit more weathered or used appeal. And I use pigment powders. Uh, mine are from a little German uh, company called T Tabletop Basement. But you can, for example, use AK Interactive or Vallejo pigments. It is a brown tone and a rust brown tone. I dilute them with uh, water very heavily so that I get an even smoother consistency as a, as a shade color and I apply, apply them all over the silver metal pieces so I can get the illusion of a little bit of rust on top of all the areas so that it look a little bit more weathered and to dull down the silver color even more. After I applied this pigment you can use the rusty pigment, the rust brown pigment, to uh, put them down very, very diluted on some areas on the metal color, maybe on the turbines, to give it a little bit more of this weathered look. And if you want to go this step also, you can get this brown diluted pigment mix onto the armor panels on some of these recesses so that there is a little bit of rust building up over time. I don't think that in a dry desert there is so much rust, I don't know exactly. Uh, we got a very, very mild climate here, so I just can uh, get movies or documentations as a reference. I don't know for sure. Maybe you live in a very hot or deserty area where you can say yes, even in a dry desert there is very much rusting on metals. I don't know for sure. So this is a kind of benefit of the doubt. Here is a rust brown pigments for a little bit more of the rust definition and after this I apply a little bit of this pigment mix in the recesses you see it here. Uh, it's very important to don't overdo this step that uh, the flyer doesn't look like it's downed and uh, lay there on the ground for some months or years. It just needs to be a tiny amount to give it a little bit more definition and to maybe tell a story with this model so you can say yes it's in sir uh, it's in service for several months or years and the maintenance is a uh, very very small cause there is no time or uh, the resources run low and the maintenance can not be done fully so you can polish all these um, armor platings and there is a little bit of rust building up all over the machine. And this is where we end this tutorial. These are all the steps, these are the miniatures again. I hope you liked this camouflage pattern with weathering on these tiny tiny aircrafts and if you do something like this too, maybe you wanna send me an message or a picture just check out the links down under in the video description there is a link to my facebook page maltisch am mittwoch this is my german channel fan page there you can send me pictures if you like or if you uh, kind of know to speak german you can join our german discord server disease discord link is in the video description also thank you for watching have a nice day. Maybe you want to click on the videos here um, that's displayed on the screen right now. And uh, I would say, keep on wargaming.